Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayley. The scenario is Mr. Corbett. It was written by Michael DeWolf, and it appears in Mansions of Madness. It's one of my favorite scenarios, and this will be the third time that we've run it. Uh, I am the Game Master, and this is episode one. So without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. New England, for all its ghost-haunted nooks and crannies, can be very beautiful in the spring and summer months. Sometimes the days are perfect, the flowers bloom, the bees buzz, and the barbecue goes off without a hitch. But even in the best of neighborhoods, where nothing bad ever happens, the malignant seed of rumor can spring up and choke the flowers and poison the bees. To slightly paraphrase Henri de Balzac, it is often assumed by the leisurely and empty-headed who chatter amongst themselves for want of something better to do that quiet people who do not discuss their private lives openly must have something to hide. Our story begins on a hot Saturday afternoon, June 23rd, 1923. A group of neighbors gather for a barbecue at Mr. and Mrs. Peter Harrow's house in Southwest Arkham, Massachusetts. The Harrow's backyard has some substantial shade trees and the party goers sit and feast on ribs and corn on the cob and a bounty of other fresh vegetables. The guests chat about current events and comment on the state of the world at large. This is a typical Saturday and occurs many times in the warm months in a neighborhood where nothing ever happens. One thing that is not typical, the Harrow's across the street neighbor has joined them. Mr. Bernard Corbett is a well-known fixture in the neighborhood and he is liked by all, a quiet man. He has been invited many times over the years to these barbecues, but he's only rarely attended. Although you see him almost every day, it's usually nothing more than a friendly nod. He's an avid gardener and his large plot is meticulously maintained by his own hand. From spring until autumn, he often shares the bounty from his vegetable garden and fruit trees. He shares it with everyone in the neighborhood. People wake to find baskets of fruit on their front steps. The delicious flavored tomatoes on the table today were brought by him, as were the tasty summer squash and melons. He even brought a small oriental vase with, a, uh, with an orchid in it as a gift to Mrs. Harrow. Um, born and raised in Arkham, Mr. Corbett is a handsome man in his late 30s. Though he presents himself as a strong and confident man, his life has been plagued by tragedy. He attended Miskatonic University, but had to drop out after his father died in order to take him to the family business. His mother died soon after that. He was happily married, but his wife died in childbirth and the baby was stillborn. All this happened over a decade ago and he has never been the same since. He continues to run his business, Corbett Importers of America, and is considered by his peers to be an outstanding businessman with a strong work ethic. He maintains membership in the Art and Businessmen's Association and is considered to be a fair and honest man. He would make an excellent husband to anyone, but he has never gotten over the death of his wife and he remains stubbornly disinterested in social events, which is why he has never, which why he has attended so few barbecues. As you laugh and carry on sipping lemonade, Mr. Corbett sits quietly in a deck chair in the shade of, of the Haro's grand old oak tree and listens to your pleasant conversation. Take it away. Survey, glad you could make it. We just uh, got another a batch of uh, sweet corn off the grill, if you'd like one. It's excellent this year. Corbett special. I uh, hope, you, uh, hope you got a stiff drink to go with it. Uh, I don't think Talma's going to be joining us today. Uh, she, uh, she's trying to get me to get rid of the old, uh, you know, the, the old uh, Ash, Ashra levitation tables. Um, I just, I'm too attached to it. I can't, uh, you know, uh, stage magician and his, uh, you know, and his tricks. I can only imagine, of course. It's uh, always important can... to. 
It's always no, no, you carry on. I was going to offer you a drink, but, but that's fine. It's always important to think about all the skills that, that refer to, to magic or anything you, you can imagine. And uh, thanks, Peter, for the inv invitation. I took the liberty to, to come with Mar Maria. And uh, as a gift for your hospitality, I, bring, I did bring some baguette with me. Very nice. Thank you. Much appreciated. Uh, and survey, there is uh, the, um, the gin is in the uh, green carafe down there. It makes the lemonade a little bit drier. Anybody else want one? No, I'm good. Thank you. I've, I'm, I'm trying this new uh, water lemon mix that I've um, tasting. I, I'm not sure the kids like it. I, I'm, not, I'm not so keen on it, I must be honest. When I sweet. first went to Persia, I uh, the the they had shaved ice, and they would actually put a put a little bit of the lemon on it when I was there. Uh, I guess it was uh, it's uh, it's all the all the rage amongst the uh, the shahs over there. Of course, because uh, you know, being uh, being so well traveled, I, I I got to meet him myself. You know, I I'm sure I've told you all this. Rings a bell, yes. Bernard, the uh, cucumbers this year are remarkably crisp. Yes, um, I've done very well with them this year. No bugs at all. You might not believe me, but the secret is frogs. <laughs> frogs. Yes, I, um, I, I have uh, old pottery and um, the occasional dropped coffee cup, of which I take into my yard around my garden. And I bury them part way in the ground with a um, little bit above ground and the uh, frogs and toads tend to move in. They like, uh, they like the cool dampness of them and uh, the, the restrictive sides. And I must have two dozen frogs living in my garden and they all come out every night and eat every bug that manages to land in my garden. So I'm, I'm almost completely bug free, not a caterpillar on the broccoli. It's uh, quite marvelous uh, organic gardening. Staying away from the sounds pesticides. Really, sounds really interesting. From what, I, from what I've heard from my father in France, uh, I heard that they use uh, coccinelle to, to fight against the flies. Uh, if I recall correctly, since I, you, you all know it, I learned, uh, I learned English in the fly. Um, I think it is ladybug, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, they uh, eat aphids or some such. The ladybird yeah. beetles, yes, they're very pretty too in the garden. And praying mantises as well. Mm. And the tough. croaking of the frogs at night doesn't bother you? Not really. I mean, we've got woodlands all the way around us, so I mean, it's not much much different. The cicadas in the hot of the summer usually get to me a bit, but that's about all. Um, my chiefest enemy is Mr. Raccoon. Um, it's sometimes it's difficult to get a good head of, uh, of, of uh, corn. Um, they love the corn. And I don't plan very much. At least they have the decency much. to uh, announce their intent with the mask of the bandit. I've, uh, I've thought about sitting out in my garden with a shotgun and uh, uh, picking them off, but uh, we're not allowed to shoot guns in the uh, uh, inside the uh, the city, um, uh, I could put a trap together for you. Uh, you know, do a, a snare or uh, something a little more humane, if you like. Uh, I've, I, I mean, I've got I've got the stuff in the in the wood shop. Uh, you know, uh, as long as it's not too late, uh, Tom would kill me. But uh, yeah, I mean, I could throw that together for you here one of these days. Uh, just say the word. Perhaps we should get together and talk. I've tried a few. I've tried a few traps and snares and, and with limited success. For the most part, I managed to do pretty well. I've thought even about, I, I have such an abundance, I plant some of the vegetables knowing that they're going to uh, 
rob me like the little bandits that they are. Did you try it with a dog? Uh, I'm not really a dog person or a cat person. Um, they require a lot of attention. You know. Yeah, cats are, are a lot easier than dogs, I must admit. That's true. Come and go as they wish. Dog is sometimes a bit needy. I mean, oh, I can see the appeal of a pet. But... Um, I should think that a uh, cat would wreak havoc on your frog population as well. That's probably true. But I can't particularly picture you in a lawn chair with a shotgun on your lap. A <laughs> trap seems much more likely. Well, we could always drug them. Something that'll just knock them out. And we can just move them out of the neighborhood. That's an interesting idea. I'm afraid it's out, it's out of my expertise. Any new commissions, Eugene? Oh, of, new commissions. Uh, I had a new commission about those fruit baskets, uh, those wood fruit, fruit basket, baskets, that some people ask me on top of um, the coffin, you know. I think I have it somewhere as an example. Yes, this one. Oh, that's kind of kind of neat. Do you, do you think I, I would be able to get you to... I mean, I've, we've got that new installation I was talking to you about. So like the, the soda fountains, um, the machine actually arrived this week, but it's in this big, uh, what do you call it, a uh, case, but it's, it's, it's not really, it's not decorative enough, I think. So I'm thinking of um, diamond shaped panels, blue, light blue and green. Um, maybe you could, could you help me with something to that extent. We'll just, have to, we'll just have to buy the stain for, for the wood, but it's perfectly feasible. Ah, I think it'll be a, it'll be, it'll, it'll, I think it'll look really, really good. It's just hard to, to get, um, I mean, I think my, I think my main clientele would be the, the kids and the, the university students. Um, and I need something that's juiced up to get them in. I mean, I know they, they, uh, they come for the other stuff. Uh, I'll have to, to look. I'll have to look in the book. My um, my uh, my I can't say my master at this point. Uh, my master Pierre Chapelle uh, gave, gave me back at the time. I think there was uh, designs that uh, were that were that were, that were concerning um, kids or um, or uh, anything of that nature. So sounds good. That sounds good. Well, I must say that um, the desk that you uh, made for me, Eugene, was is a rem remarkable piece of furniture. Um, I, I I find myself spending more and more time at my desk. I learned from I learned from a great man. Um, you must come round, uh, gentlemen, to, to 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 see it. It's it is a remarkable piece of furniture. It's like it every actually, art. Yeah. It's like every art. Mr. Servet, uh, Monsieur Servet, uh, right here can, I think, can uh, apply to this too, because you always think, you always think that you are good in it, but at some point you feel like it is not enough, and this is why I start to 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 get into blacksmithing lately. Yeah. The. Uh... You know the what, there's all these different tricks that uh, you know you pick up here and there. You know a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of this, a little of that. You know, and I'm just like got a coin and doing this whole. Um, you know, but but you're right. There's always something. Uh, there, there, there's always something more. You know, there, there's that that the, the truth that comes from uh, from true creation. You know, something that's unique. You know, something that's yours. But um, surely um, 
from woodwork to to blacksmithy is uh, a, a a big step for you, Eugene. How are you finding it? Is, it is a big and um, and a small step at the same time. At the beginning, I was thinking that it would help me to control the costs, to repair my tools and uh, everything of that nature. But at some point, I did think about doing things like that. Simple, effective. Hmm. Uh, it makes me think of the uh, the Bushmen. They have instruments that's like that in South Africa. Mm, brings back memories, you know. Berenbaum, right? They're certainly built like a uh, blacksmith. It's nothing fancy, really. It's uh, a few bars of metal in uh, with screws and nothing more than a case of resonance. Did you tune it by ear? Did you, uh, how'd you, did you use, uh, did you, or did you use forks or, it, it sounds like it's in a, it's pretty, pretty well in tune. Um, you know, I, I may have you, uh, I may have you come, come look at the piano. Um, it's, uh, it's in dire need of a tune and, well, a magician never reveals his secrets, but I, I, I think I could use your help actually with a trick I'm working on with the piano. So, uh, if you've got a decent, if you want to, I can swing if a you want around. to. Uh, on on uh, instruments in general, uh, since I am not really used to, to make instruments, I refer to the manual of my uh, of my master, uh, Monsieur, Monsieur Chapelle. It seems to me too that piano tuning is an art all in itself, isn't it? It's and commonly so, the blind, is it not, that tune pianos? I was not aware of that. Very That's true. true. Well, I've I've heard that um, lack in one sense increases the um, the range of the, of other senses, but I don't think uh, piano tuners are exclusively blind. Um, but I'm I'm sure that they are quite capable of performing. Yeah, it's not exclusively by any means, but it's you know it's a it's a uh, skilled labor that the sightless can perform, and there is a limit. You know, there are only so many things. Certainly, the piano tuner isn't using his eyes while he's working. So it's interesting, interesting idea. A lot of craft, a lot of craftsmen in France, or in not not even simply craftsmen, but a lot of people in France just say. Plus tu, tra plus tu travailles, plus tu es bon. Which can uh, mostly, uh, roughly traduce to the more you work at something, the better you get at it. Mm. Well, I can that's tell you something that's true. getting, something that's not getting better is this water lemon flavor. I'm going to get something else. I'll try the lemonade. It's, um, it's perfect. Yeah, I think I'll finish my gin by now. So if uh, if you're standing up, you just kind of, you know. Oh, uh, you want one? Yeah. Yes, I think yeah, I like I'll... lemonade sounds delightful. All right, anyone else? Let's see. Oh, I'll stick with the lemonade. Thank you, Jacobus. All right. Cool. Uh, alcohol doesn't agree with me. I'm going to try it too. After all, I'm going to help you with, uh, with a bit of furniture. So. Let the smell be some, be some part of it too. Uh, yeah. I, I, I may employ your services once more um, in the near future, Eugene. I'm running out of um, book space. Of course. Yeah. What you need is a secret door. You need that, you know, you, a whole second. Do you have a, do you have a, uh, a latrine closet or uh, perhaps an old servant's quarters that isn't being used? That's the, the best libraries. You know, you have the uh, pull back on, uh, on your, uh, you know, on your M for mystery. You know, of course I am the, uh, you know, I, I am the marvelous mis mysterious magician after all. So pull on the M, it slides away and enter you go. 
It's just, sounds like, like a, an interesting question. It's just like my bottom to your trunk trick. Of course, you, you guys, you, you've all, you've all seen that. Um, I'm, I, you can tell I'm getting ready to wind up for the same. The, check out how awesome and famous I am story that I've told a million times before. Um, you know, I'm about to take a big, deep breath and here it comes. That so, reminds me, Survey. Uh, I was wondering about this. Um, magicians, uh, tricks, the mechanism for a sliding door, that sort of thing. Do you, are those patented? How do you protect your information when you have, you know, a dedicated secret like that? I've never seen a patent for a magical item come through the office. So, well, uh, I, I, I tell you, a magician never reveals his tricks, but, uh, you know, you can have this one for free. My greatest trick was finding a good lawyer. Um, the uh, Horace Green. He's uh, he's he's a he's a he's a great guy. Yeah, I, yeah, I know um, I know Green. He's responsible. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yes. Uh, I I recently signed a contract. That's why I'm I'm no longer touring. I recently signed a contract with him. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed the song "A Lady in Half." It's starting to pop up a little bit more. Um, the, yeah, we uh, yeah we 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 sold the rights. You can license it now. Instead of telling people you can't do my trick because it's mine, they'll eventually figure it out. Give it to them, but ask them to give you a taste. All right. Yeah, that's surely, that. surely by now you can now tell us how that trick works. I mean, I know you've been like hush hush, but if it's now, well, I won't say common knowledge, but I mean, we know each other quite a while now. Well, you know, really the, uh, you know, the trick itself, it, it, it doesn't take, uh, it, it, it's not that much of a, of a secret. The, uh, the trick is it's, we, there, we don't have the wives present tonight. Uh, it's, it's this suffrage movement that's going on. Uh, you know, there wasn't anything fancy or anything special or anything remarkable about sawing your uh, random stage hand in half, you know, the, the bumbling fool that, uh, you know, that you have that, that drops the juggle balls, you know, things like that. Um, this, this, uh, this women's suffrage movement it just it's it had the uh, it has the people all it, it fired up they're animated and there's some uh there's some uh, an undercurrent that the uh the the, the, the trick capitalized on and i think that that's what made it such a huge success but really the uh you know the the, the trick it's it's very simple i could i could show you you could do it with two chairs right now actually and a tablecloth if you wanted to um but uh, the 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 thing that really made it stand out was using the buzz saw uh, of course and uh, so the blood in the in the front of the in the front of the theater, we actually use horses blood. We would just pay the pay the state, you know, the, the butcher boys to come in and slosh it through the gutters. It's uh, it's it's a, it's a lot of sizzle and flash, but really it's it's a it's very simple mechanically to uh, to pull off. Uh, it's, 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 it's Subtlety like, is key. Subtlety is key. It's, it's are, are you telling me that it's more of a mechanism than it is magic. Uh, oh, you, you mean like uh, like sawing like a woman in half? Magic, and I. I mean, how how, how do you how do you, I've I've seen you many years ago saw a woman in half, and you separated the two boxes, and the top half was in one box, and the and her legs moved. Mm -hmm. how how is that i mean maybe you don't want to reveal that to me but no, 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 of course so uh at this point he, uh, survey stands up and he moves next to uh who, who's sitting next to me um probably horatio i i we're about we're about the same uh same build and I, I sit down next to him and uh i start moving around a bunch of stuff and just getting everybody to focus and on all that and then I, uh, uh, I kind of nudge, uh, nudge your legs. Now, now kick out your legs, Horatio. And uh, you know he starts kicking them out. And then I rotate the table a bit, you know, and lean back. And he's kicking his legs. And then I just kind of push my chair away from the table, and uh, creates a separation. Then it makes it seem, you know, I, use your imagination. You know what? You know we all know how the trick works. But so uh, there's there's two people. There are there are two involved. people. Yes. I always thought it was done with mirrors. Well, see, that's that, that's the uh, the sawing part, of course. Uh, you, you, the to cover up the switch. Uh, you know, you will use mirrors, especially when when I implemented the the, the glass front uh, version of the trick. Uh, you know, with, with the buzz saw. And again, uh, you know, most most of these 
most of these yokels, they didn't even have electricity yet in their homes. Uh, you know, and all of a sudden they've got the lights and the stage, uh, a lot of the sizzle and the flash again, you know, those, uh, is a, you know, those Barnum boys, they had it figured out. Uh, there's, you know, you, you dazzle them with, uh, dazzle them with the lights and the music and, uh, you know, give them a, uh, give them a feast of, uh, uh, sensory, uh, overload there. And I mean, I barely, you know, you barely need to have to, you know, palm a card and then, you know, you can get them eaten out of your hand immediately. What's, uh, what's in this lemonade? I'm, I'm staring at uh, survey and he's looking awfully blurry. Is it one of your tricks, Survey? Uh, perhaps. It's very interesting. It sounds like much of magic is just developed out of kids' pranks. Yeah, I think there's, there's, there's nothing. I mean, it's all just superstitious. The superstition that drives the... Uh, the, um, the thought of, of, of something that isn't there. Well, the people really believe in magic when they go to magic shows. I mean, we don't well, know its tricks, right? Well, uh, well but, but, by the sounds of it, tellers. sounds like someone, someone wants to see. <laughs> fortune tellers are trying to deceive people with magic tricks. Uh, yeah, you haven't seen. Uh... You haven't seen the show. Uh, you didn't see the show, the last leg of the tour. Uh, we, no, uh, I, I haven't come we, to we the show in a bringing, long time. Um, yeah, we, uh, I'm, I'm almost ashamed to admit it. We, we did start bringing, uh, bringing the seances in, and it just, uh, they want something to believe. Uh, so it, it'll, it, it'll, it'll bring them in. I suspect that since the fun of going to the magic show is trying to guess at how the trick is done, I think people would be very upset if something that actually appeared to be magical happened on the stage. They would feel cheated and confused and frightened, run you out of town. Imagine something tragic could happen on the stage and they would think it's part of the show. You might accidentally really cut a woman in half. Uh, you've, all, you've all heard about the bullet catch uh, trick, uh, the man who invented that. I mean, he just, uh, what was it last fall? He just, uh, he, he died after performing it. You know, I don't know that I read about that. I've been obsessed lately with the uh, news reports coming out of Europe about the uh, Etna eruption. Uh, the plume of smoke is covering, you know, thousands of miles and tens of thousands of people have been displaced. It makes for a very the, grim reading. Is that the same volcano that uh, destroyed uh, Pompeii? I believe it is. I believe it is. And I, I read that, that um, the, the smoke from that was so, so remarkable that it affected the weather for some time to come. Well, sunlight, sunlight is directly connected to human life from what some people in France think. It may be possible. Yeah. Well, I mean, the smoke in the air. All of this, all, all of Bernard's excellent produce grew in the light of the sun. Without it, we have nothing. It's all chemical reactions. Nothing more. I you know, suppose. The culture has a, uh, you know, has, has some kind of uh, creation story, some kind of myth. You know, the, the Egyptian god Ra, um, the, uh, well, I don't know. Had a, a bit to drink. I, I can't think of anything, anyone other than that. But of course, you know, there's uh, the, the sun gods, the Mayans, of course, down in uh, Mexico. Um, that reminds me, Mr. Corbett, your um, order for a medium force fight, um, it'll be in on Tuesday. Oh, excellent. Some sort of fertilizer? Yes, um, yes. There's a lot of, uh, there's been a number of papers written about it being used. Um, to supplement soils and uh, uh, add nitrogen and things to the soil. I've been doing some, you know, all I have to do is gardening. Uh, 
other than regular work, and uh, it's been my hobby. So I've been trying different things and seeing if I can. I, obviously, I'm doing some good. Uh, everything is growing nicely. Indeed. You're sort of both a scientist and a magician when it comes to the garden. Oh, I say that, yes. And this orchid is remarkably delicate. Yeah. Actually, they're fairly hardy. Um, it's just that, you know, up until maybe 50 years ago, nobody really knew how to grow them. Grow them. Um, from what I understand, uh, there were a number of very wealthy English uh, gentlemen who had large greenhouses, orangeries, and they were importing ferns and greenery and things like that. And in one case, a box of ferns that arrived was packed with um, orchid uh, bulbs um, that they were just using as packing material. Hmm. And uh, a couple of his gardeners decided that they would see if they could get them to grow and voila, these magnificent flowers appear. And then it became an obsession and uh, a deadly one. Um, oh yes, there, there are, there probably are still today people scouring South America and Asia and stuff looking for orchids and murdering one another when they find them. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. Oh, ghastly business. They've, they've also gone into areas and collected as many orchids as they can and then burned the forest, the, the jungle, in order to keep anybody else from getting them. It's, uh, it's, it's like probably... <laughs> They oh, the probably depths, destroyed the depths that people go the resort to, and it's all for flowers. Well, I mean the Dutch and tulips. After all, I'm sure I'm sure people died over the Dutch tulips. I must say, Bernard. Uh, um, I, I must say, Bernard. The uh, the the vase that the the orchid is 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 in is. Um, Yes, most unique. Most unique. That came from uh, Punjab, India. Um, I got a number of them in for my shop, and I thought that one was particularly pretty, uh, uh, particularly suited to Mrs. Harrow. So, do, do the designs mean anything? I don't really know. Uh, it's difficult. I've noticed over the years. It's very difficult to pin down. Uh, the Hindu belief system. Um, it's really multiple religions, um, millions of different deities and so forth that all have regional aspects. There's, some say there's more deities than there are people living in India. Um, and everybody has their own, their own. I'm sorry? Do you mind, do you mind if I take a look? Uh, oh, at the, the base? Yeah, 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 of course. Very pretty. Uh, do uh, do, do I see anything? Um, it's mostly flowers, you know. Pretty. Okay. Yeah. It's very beautiful, delicate work with uh, probably gold paint and flowers. In it. Um, did you, uh, Mr. Corbett? Did, did you uh, happen to uh, hear back uh, from from your associate about the uh, uh, the, the 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 from? Um, Oh, what was his name? Your your contact overseas there in, in Egypt. Uh, I I'd asked about those urns. Those oh, that's correct. Urns. Yes. Um, I haven't heard back from him lately. Uh, I can. I'll I'll send him an inquiry tomorrow. Oh, uh, uh, Monday. Tomorrow's Sunday. Indeed. Um, it, it it sometimes takes a great deal of time to get correspondence back and forth between, especially Egypt and. Uh, oddly enough, India and China are much easier to get a hold of than. than oh, of course, you could almost teach yourself a new skill during the uh, the, the the transatlantic crossing, you know. <laughs> it's true, and then um, also Eugene uh, had an order in for ebony. I think it was, wasn't it? Uh, teak, um, some yes. wood. Yes. Yeah, I believe that is on a steamer on the way here. Um, maybe a week That's or so. Right you, should, you should see it. Um, but then uh, maybe we shouldn't talk business for the party.
Has anyone um, read the latest edition of the uh, Sentinel? There's some... Some Christmas stuff in there. Isn't it? I was talking about fates earlier on. I think there's um, that article about the jackal still being. Oh, those people. They don't know what they are doing. Um, I I don't keep up on the news very much. What What do you mean the jackal? Uh, an animal that's well, running around? Yeah, it's it's probably it's probably good you don't have any. It's 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 this. Um, it seems to be the the pets are going missing all over Arkham, and um, Lisa are suspecting what I call. I think they call it a cult or something. Uh, rubbish, utter rubbish. It's probably just some wild cat or something, bobcat or something that comes in and picks off pets. I mean, the only thing that, yeah, I don't believe in monsters like that. It's been going on for for quite some time now. Um, it's quite disturbing. Um, the pets, you say, are going missing. Yeah. Peter, don't you have the, the paper so we can have a quick look somewhere lying around? Yeah. It's from this morning. I think there was enough real news in the world, but... This piece, uh, yes, as you say, Jackal, still on the loose. Police confess that after nearly two years, they are still baffled by the mutilation and destruction of so many beloved pets. There's now some speculation that these slayings may be part of some sort of satanic cult. People are warned to keep their pets in a safe area and not let them roam, especially in the areas near Central Hospital. Previous suspects in this case have been questioned and released through lack of evidence. The wisest course of action is to protect our pets from this slayer of animals, who is now commonly referred to as the jackal. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I can't believe it's it's a, it's a person doing this. To be quite honest, well, it's it's more likely to be um, some madman than than an actual jackal, surely. Well, I know. The, the thought of a wild animal um, running loose for two years. Well, that's also it's, true. It's are, unbelievable. Aren't jackals from Africa? So yeah, well, they are. They actually. Yeah. Um, the, the word mutilation suggests that this isn't uh, animal. Uh, yeah. But, but it sounds like claws and teeth. Sounds like. And, but I, I can't believe a satanic cult in 1923. I mean, people aren't really that barbaric, are they? No, no. I mean, this is New England. No, know. I don't know. You've heard about I the mean, I can... over in Russia. I mean, it's things are getting uh, things are getting pretty pretty dicey. I, I don't know. Just, uh, yeah, civilized man. My goodness. It can really... it can still be a psychopath or or something like this. You know, you never know. Um, this uh, the, the lemonade. It's it's very sweet. Did you say something about gin? Yes, and the uh, the tinted. Uh, I'll get I'll get it. I'll just stay put. You say when. All right. You, you pour some in. Let's thank you. Thank you very much. I find it a uh, refreshing addition on a summer's afternoon. In moderation. Hmm. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, it's uh, uh, always good to uh, uh, temperance, right? Of course. And at this, he finishes his third. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, uh, maybe another one or two uh, before, you know, before, before I eat my fill, uh, perhaps. Well, uh, you know, with uh, Talma not watching, it'll be our little secret. Indeed. She always was. Uh, she always was better with the, uh, the with the sleight of hand than I was. So uh, we'll just have, we just have to watch out. And I don't say stop. It's it's uh, more, more than polite society, I guess would uh, would say would be appropriate at this point. I'd say in the, uh, it's it's getting to be pretty full. Um, yeah, yeah, no, just 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 a touch of the lemon there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yes. Mm hmm.
Uh, I think the, uh, the next round of ribs uh, will be ready in a few minutes if anybody has any more room. And I'm putting on more of this uh, excellent corn, Bernard. Um, Peter, if, if you don't mind, I'm, uh, I'm feeling a little fatigued and uh, I'm not used to all of this excitement. Um, uh, I'm going to um, retire for the evening. I don't want to cause anyone else to, to leave, but uh, uh, your hospitality has been magnificent. Thank you so much. I'll have to try and come to more of your parties. Uh, uh, and I'm uh, very glad you could make it this afternoon. I'll, uh, I'll say uh, goodbye to the, you. the ladies. Yes, right. you'll, you'll find Marta right through there. Uh, looks like, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, do, uh, looks do like Jacobus out, is asleep. So I'll just, if you get a hold of your, uh, if you get a hold of your fellow, uh, your man in, uh, in Cairo there in customs, I'll call you on Monday. Okay. Of course. Thank you. Or you can just drop by the shop too. Yeah. It's not that far. Anyways, thank you. Thank you very much for a lovely day. Thank you for coming. Uh, he turns around and goes across the street and into his house. Well, that was an interesting change of pace, wasn't it? I didn't think he'd ever come. You know, yeah. how long's it been? How many times have we been doing this? He's never showed once. I mean, percentage of invitations that he even really acknowledges is very small. Well, uh, here he's. Either he's very occupied or well you know he has been he has been very unhappy and and very you know very much to himself you know well, um, hopefully, hopefully his presence uh his presence today will be a, a sign of good things to come and we'll be seeing more of him in a social aspect it's, it's it's good it's good yeah he's not you know he's still a young man um and it's been quite a while since his loss he should really be around people and perhaps you know start another family sort of breaking again. breaking his shell yes yeah yeah uh, any of the missuses have uh, have sisters i mean uh, I, I, I don't was, see him going out much. Uh, this is probably the first time I've seen him anywhere other than going to the going to the, the uh, import shop. So, uh, you know, maybe we should uh, maybe we should look out for him. You know, be a little neighborly and maybe set set him up on uh, on a on a meet cute, so to say. Fourth of July is coming up. We should definitely think about eligible women in their maybe early thirties. As long as they didn't show up to one of those suffragette uh, meetings. Almost as bad as the Bolsheviks then. I might have some fragrant wood somewhere to do something to complement with it, depending on what you need, of course. Fragrant wood for? Anything for a surprise or anything, making something to, to add up, you know? I have never been that good with so, so the social aspect in general, as you know it. So. Mm. I, I'm sure, sure, whatever you. Language, you know, it's, uh, you know, we, we all have our, we all have our way to speak. I, I'm sure whatever you make, uh, Eugene will, um, will, will, will be good enough. Also, we will have to 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 war to not warn, but um, how to explain this to 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 put um, put our uh, sleepy friend to to the information when he will get be be awake. Oh, I mean, first I thing is that we're going to see that he he doesn't. Uh get a sunburn. Let me open the newspaper over him. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm helping him. Oh, again, Mount Etna. Um, 
What else is here? Prank at Miskatonic University. It must be a slow news week. The jackal, I don't know. It is definitely not good news. What's well, a that? terrible business at the university um, about the goat. Um, oh, I missed that. What happened to a goat? So anti sportive. So um, anti sportive. Oh, some of the baseball team um, performed a prank that went wrong with their mascot, which happened to be a goat, and the goat ended up with a, with a heart attack and died. Ghastly, ghastly. The youth of today, they never learn. Uh, you know, college pranks, but what would give a goat a heart attack? Did they, I mean, what was the prank? Did they set a lion on it? Um, well, they, they kidnapped the poor thing. Uh, no pun intended, but... Um, uh, I, yeah, yeah, I hear that. Okay. Oh, here's the really? item. I, 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 Miskatonic mm. youth prank turns sour. Summer session pranks are in full swing, but last Wednesday, a number of players in the university baseball team abducted the Gloucester goat mascot known as Pinkerton. Their intention was to return the goat after being ransomed by the other team. Unfortunately, the goat suffered a heart attack and died. That is absurd. They are in luck. They are so in luck that Monsieur Chappelle wasn't their instructor. They are so in luck with this. Uh, the Chappelle would have uh, taken it hard, I guess. It wouldn't be a ruler. It would be some more something like this. Oh, Not like this, of course. This is grim, too. Central Hospital is housing the overflow patients from Friday's disaster at Central Sanitarium, but it's ill-equipped to handle metal patients and is hoping the hospitals in Ipswich and Beverly will consider, I'm from Beverly, you know, consider offering some relief. Large water main broke in the Bolton wing, causing flooding. Can you imagine having to house a bunch of lunatics out of the sanitarium? Ghastly places. That's um... ghastly. Housing for the mentally ill patients may take weeks to resolve. Well, if that had happened two years ago, I'd blame that for the mutilated animals. You know, it's funny. I'm, I'm. It's odd to be reading the news over Jacobus like this. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, definitely uh, definitely an improvement on uh, on on my disappearing uh, woman trick, though I, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> the vanishing barbecue guest. My next act. I have to I have to get a hold of Horace about that one. If you were going to cause a goat to have a heart attack, what? How would you induce a heart attack in a goat? Extreme, extreme stress. Positive. I can only, I can only imagine that the um, the lads in question were overly rough with the poor creature. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't, I've never kidnapped a live animal myself. There was a uh, the man that I learned the uh, the the snake. Uh, the snake rope trick from uh he actually had uh, he had a camel that uh, developed a taste for uh, for spirits and uh, he would uh, uh, by the end of the by the end of the evening uh, several gallons in uh, you know uh, the, the camel would indeed be drunk uh, you know perhaps the you know perhaps the the, the youngsters uh, decided to uh, imbibe with the with the goat maybe that maybe that caused it the uh, the folly of youth as they say i guess who knows what they were got up to with that poor animal? Not to mention <sighs> that domesticated animals, uh, from what I remember, school was back then uh, a bit 
today. But I think wild animals are more resistant to resilient to stress than domesticated ones, from what I remember. Uh, Jacobus so. suddenly wakes with a start with the newspaper draped over him. And he's back, ladies and gentlemen. That was it, the disappearing newspaper garden guest. And Forgive us, Jacobus. Uh, we were just um, shading you from the sun while, while you had your nap. That's okay. Take, take a minute. Wake up. We can tell you're, uh, you're still a bit out of it. Uh, I, I, do I do apologize. Th thank you. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. Uh, We've all had I'll, a, drink a glass of ice water. Um, and uh, you, the, the latest round of ribs are ready if you'd like to line your stomach, unless you're. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Perhaps, uh, perhaps uh, move your seat under the, under the shade of the tree. Bernard, let, let me do. Let me do that. Thank you, gentlemen. I do. I do appreciate. Bernard uh, sends his farewells. He took his leave while you were out, and we were saying how remarkable it was to see him at all. Yes, I must say. I, mean, I, I see him every now and then. Um, uh, lunchtime, he as he goes to office, and you know, really. he could not be more regular in his habit. Yeah, I see him every day, but only to only a nod generally. Yeah. It's um. I, I sometimes wonder about him. He seems so lonely. Well, but he doesn't join us more. We were talking about whether we knew any eligible women, maybe in their early to mid thirties. Perhaps this, you know, sudden relative sociability indicates that he might be thinking about, you know, maybe. going back to his life after his um, losses. What do you, how, how old did you say is, is Miss Buckwater? Miss Buckwater. Uh, Josephine. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, Raisha, yeah. Um, oh, she's... I don't think she's um, available. Ah. Uh, for court, for courting. She's, um, she's in her 60s, you know. Well, it wouldn't wouldn't be the first time, you know, uh, depending on the uh, depending on the, the the size of the dowry, I suppose. But uh, you know, say, uh, uh, yeah, Mr. Dewalt, uh, you, you don't have any. Uh, your wife does she have a sister, or uh, we're trying to maybe fix them up for the uh, for the Fourth of July. Um, you know, uh, maybe bring uh, maybe bring some eligible young women around there for uh, for our guest. And I would be at a loss if if I lost Josephine to a. Uh... To, to anyone huh? I, I must admit i did not i i, I did misjudge um, josephine's age she she doesn't come across i thought she was definitely much younger don't, don't let the missus hear that <clears throat> she does look good though for her age right <laughs> all right so as the evening goes on you guys indulge in some more food some dessert that the ladies have made up. You have some cigars and some cognac. And is there anything that you would like to do before the end of the evening, before you go to bed and, and you retire for the, the day? I mean, you know, of course, the, the household will have a lot of cleaning to do. Um, yeah, I think. Um, oh, I'm sure. I'm sure Josephine would help. Would help with that, uh, Peter. Right. So we'll begin negotiating how much Josephina helps and how how I usher you out at some point so that we all maintain the correct social balance of... I mean, I can help too, if you want. Yeah, well, I mean, again, I invite you here to enjoy yourselves, not to uh, not to labor. If you, I, we do have, um, uh, uh, you know, we do, uh, have a fair bit of food if you want to take anything for you know an early week lunch or something. I was um, actually thinking about uh, seeing if if Talma might want to drop off 
uh, he doesn't have a woman in the home, uh, Mr. Corbett, you know, just, just to show him that we, uh, we, we enjoyed his company as much as he enjoyed ours. Uh, maybe we could put together some of the uh, Tarina's leftovers. Um, uh, just, just, uh, you know, let's, let's keep, uh, let's grease these tracks. Let's, uh, you know, make him feel welcome to come back again. Yeah. Capital idea surveys capital. Yeah. Let's put a, a little note saying how nice it was to see him on top of it. I'm all for That's it. That's a stellar I idea. Can, I can engrave it if you want. It's not that complicated or long or, you know. Oh, I think something more casual. I mean, we're, it's a barbecue after all. Um, uh, before the next barbecue, uh, I was also thinking, uh, since you know we've got the lads together for the moment, I, I'd like to propose a poker game uh, from Friday, and maybe we can get him around for that as well. Uh, can Do you, you make think it? He plays poker. I think he probably doesn't. Uh, I'm, no, actually, the Friday is not good. It'll have to be the Sunday. Uh, which is just before the fourth, anyway. Um, I don't. I don't imagine he does play poker, but I imagine once he knows the rules, he'll be frighteningly good at it. The man's yeah. mind is so orderly. That is true. Um, so you know, it'll be low stakes, friendly game, two decks. You know, I'll uh, get. Uh, I'll. I'll make sure that I bring in uh, another set of these, uh, another box of these cigars, which I find rather nice. Um, so I hope I can count you in. Sunday, say, start at 6 p.m. and we'll have a light dinner after the first few hands. Uh, to me? Just, just, just warning you, don't let the, uh, don't, don't let the wives play. My, uh, my wife will clean you out. Um, she's, uh, she's pretty deft. Uh, that's noted, and I also, I, I'm perhaps we won't have you deal, given. Nothing up these sleeves either. <laughs> I don't think you I don't think you'd have to have anything up your sleeves at all. I could trust that you could put four aces in your hand every time. Uh, and if the ladies are free, then we can set up a bridge table inside for them, uh, away from uh, all the cigar smoke. Uh, I'm afraid I don't know how to play poker, but bridge, um, I'm familiar with with bridge. Well, perhaps we'll all train at hands and everyone will learn something. Bridge um, is a gambling game too, I understand. Uh, you know, I think we've got a Mahjong set somewhere inside the house and Marta's been after me to learn how to play that, but it seems awfully complicated and foreign. But oh, we could have no, a federal a, games night. Yeah, you, you, you'd love it. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's perfectly exotic. I've never been out of New England, after all. Here you are, a world traveler. Okay. I didn't want it to break the mood, but the only card game I always play, I ever played in my entire life was the Boulette, the old French card game. I don't know if I've heard that. I hold that. Sounds like. That. Sounds like this. It can be quite a pleasant evening. Lots to learn. Yes, we'll call it games night. Maybe I'll set up a dartboard outside as well. All right. So the sure. evening, the evening winds itself down, and you all end up going home. Uh, the next day is Sunday. Um, do any of you have any plans? Um, if not, we can skip ahead. Let's say to Monday. And. Uh, I to say it's a neighborhood where not much ever happens. Nothing ever happens. Well, certainly, um, uh, none of us are pet owners, and we're pretty oh, yeah, far dogs. from the district that, that was described as having as being the epicenter of the pet problem. Right. Not near us. All right. Um, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll sort of keep an eye on the paper for other local oddities because that's a little disturbing. But other than that, I'm perfectly happy to get back to law for a Monday morning, bright and early. If the weather's pleasant Sunday, I'd probably be on my um, porch reading a book or two. I'm gonna, I was well, going to see if uh, uh, Eugene, or is that, uh, sorry, I'm just, uh, uh, the French was never my, uh, 
was never my strong suit. Uh, more of a more of an Eastern guy. Um, I was gonna see if you uh, if you wanted to give me a hand, maybe put assembling some of these uh, some of these traps for the for the raccoons and such. Um, of course. You know the the wife she lets the cat out sometimes, and if uh, you know whether it was this this jackal or uh, you know getting in a fight with a raccoon, uh, I I just don't think uh, her heart could take it if anything ever happened to that that poor thing. Um, of course. Uh... Of course, in uh, these, my, these uh, late, my latest uh, skills in, uh, in blacksmithing can become something correct, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could, uh, we you know, just just fab fabricating the the, the springs uh, to get them to be the, the you know the, the proper tension would be. Uh, I just I just don't have anything like that. Uh, you know, you, we don't. Uh, I think Mr. Corbett said he didn't want to kill the uh, animals after all, so. You you know maybe uh, again you could uh, you could help fashion some of those springs so that that'd be great I'd appreciate it let's uh, let's get get some on the on the books for here for this week. So. Mm. Uh, yes, I hope these way, traps traps will be humane. Oh, uh, Tom, um, by the way, uh, for uh, for blacksmithing, since I only have thirty um, voyage for roll or I think that's a Tom question. What was your question? Uh, do I roll for um, for blacksmithing since I don't have that high of a score? Well, if you've never really done it before, I mean, you're just learning. It's um, recent. It's recent, but it's the same idea generally. Yeah, as... I'd say it's a craft. You can put that on there in your craft. Give yourself, I don't know, thirty percent. It's. Just... Uh, I already put it. Okay. It's yeah. More of a ahead. recent thing, but yeah. Yeah, spring is I mean, not. It's complicated. You're wor you're working together, so I don't think you. I mean, you're 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 working together. I don't see any reason to. You know, it's all I can, trial. I can help him out with the uh, yeah. uh, mechanical repair of seventy. If there's any issues with the, uh, and the mechanism itself, we can we can iron it out. I think we could. You're we can doing this on it. Sunday, or you're doing it uh, on Sunday, probably. Well, uh, you know, I think I went over to to schedule it, but uh, we got. To you know, I, I, we got to talking about just the possibilities for it. The next thing you know, the thing's half built already. So, uh, you know, it's uh, what, what, what do you know? Hey, well, you know, glad I stopped over, right? Okay, you're you're at Eugene's house, or yes. Okay. Cool. Oh no, my bad, my bad. I mistook something for the springs. Uh, the springs are not that complicated to do. My okay, bad. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I've got I've got you know uh, tools at the tools at the house too. Whatever right. we need, you know. So this is the next day, and you guys have been working on this. What do you want to do besides that? I think that's well enough because making right. springs by hand is already time consuming. All right. Did it look like uh, Did it look like Mr. Corbett? Um, uh, it, it, Opened up and uh, grabbed the basket and all that, or uh, uh, you know, did, did he, you did he left a the basket door? over there? Yeah, we sent over the the terrain oh, right. of uh, I had Tama drop it off and just like with a little note thanking him for the nice evening and all. Um, uh, yes, he did. He must okay. have uh, he okay. must have gotten that a little later that evening. Okay. Um, but at approximately, uh, what what time would you say it is since you guys have been up and working on this? Hmm. I mean, it's been, it's been a couple uh, hours. Time flies, you know. For my part, I think uh, 6 a.m. and uh, because it's it's mostly time consuming, but complicated. Well, that's the time that you yeah. started, but yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, to to it's probably close to lunch time. 12 right? a.m. and oh, uh, the okay. the afternoon too. A big part of the afternoon actually, actually. Okay, so you guys will say that it will say that it's getting close to noon time. Now, one thing that you've noticed about Mr. Corbett is usually on Sundays around 10 or 11, well, probably 11 on the dot, uh, he likes to go for a drive. So uh, he has gotten in his car and he's driven away. He's usually gone for two or three hours and then he comes back. He drives on the country roads. I would have probably seen him drive off if yes. I was on my porch. Yeah. Say, so, uh, uh... Why don't we, uh, do you think maybe, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't mean to, I, I wouldn't want to just uh, impose, but uh, he didn't seem to, um, 
he didn't seem too keen on the trap idea at first. Uh, you know, maybe maybe we should go over and maybe set set him up. We don't even need to need to let him know. You know, we'll be saving his uh, saving his organic produce. Uh, you know, so uh, maybe you know go by the backyard and see if uh, we find a good thicket where uh, where these raccoons might be coming in at and uh, set up some traps. What do you say? Yeah, yeah, that uh, that is um, a good bet. Yeah. So in this part boys, of... of course, they're going to have to come help us out because uh, you know these hands don't. These hands don't do the hard labor. I'm, so in, in this part of New England, and especially in your neighborhood, I mean, there's not a huge security risk at all. Uh, so you don't really have solid fences. You don't have chain link or anything like that. You have hedges that separate your yards. And they're only uh, part of the, they, they really only go between your properties because the front of your property is usually more or less open to the street. And the back of your party backs up against woodlands. Um, so you guys are completely, your whole community is kind of surrounded by woodlands and isolated. And then just to the north is the city proper. Um, so okay. you guys feel both isolated and at the same time, you're literally, you could walk through the stands of trees and come out into Arkham proper if you wanted to. You guys often do walk. You can walk to town in 10 or 15 minutes. Um, so his property is laid out. Uh, his house is in the front. Um, directly behind his house, but about halfway through the yard, is his greenhouse, uh, which is a fairly substantial greenhouse. It's maybe uh, 12 feet wide and maybe 25 or 26 feet long. Um, it's a good proper greenhouse. Uh, it is whitewashed, uh, so that you know, reduces the, the blazing hot sun. Uh, and then directly to the, if you're if you're looking north, south, east, west, directly to the right hand side of that is his vegetable garden, which takes up almost half of his property uh, in the back. Uh, and then there are fruit trees that sort of ring the whole whole yard. The front has flower beds. Uh, say, boys, do you remember what what it was that the uh, that the raccoons uh, had a taste for? Uh, what, what, what was it? What did say? Well, I would presume that they dig up most of his vegetables. Uh, I mean, what, what do you say? Maybe along the tree line, then? Uh, so, you know, I, I, we wouldn't want him stepping on uh, stepping on one of these things. So, uh, you know, maybe maybe uh, maybe out by the tree line, see if we can see where there's been any uh, tracks or uh, uh, like parting in the, the, the underbrush. You know. That would be a good start, yes. If we can find, if we can find traces of uh, of them gathering around, that would be something interesting. Yeah, I can't think of a better way to convince him to show up to poker night than to catch these, uh, you know, catch these vegetable thieves, you know, red-handed, and be able to, you know, hey, let's look, see, we're all in this together. You know, we help each other in this neighborhood, right? Yeah. You're you're telling this to Eugene. Is or is anybody else in on it? Uh, Peter would certainly see you walk into his yard. Yeah, I'm. I'll right. if 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 I'm on my porch um, and I spot them, I'm like, what are these guys up to? They really should talk to to Mr. Corbett before just going and messing around in his garden. I think. Yeah, we've got I'll, these big like kind of boxes. They look like lobster traps or something. You know the. Uh, you know these big they, they definitely look uh look like they're uh not manufactured uh mass produced they look uh you know they're, they're nailed and uh yeah, artesian i guess uh, uh raccoon traps there you know and we're, we're probably talking animatedly about uh, the different techniques for spring loaded versus uh gravity shut gate trap things you know well, my, the, yeah. fine, the finer points of uh yeah, gravity back. is easier to made and faster, but spring but loaded it, is safer. Yeah, exactly. If uh, you know, if, if it's if it's off center or if it's uh, if, you know, if the animal isn't perfectly on the platform, then uh, the gravity just doesn't have enough force to spring it shut. So there's a lot of easier chance of not just the animal getting away. But the animal being partially trapped, and you know, I, I raccoons are—they're known to chew their own leg off to get away. 
uh, you know, so you wouldn't, you, you know, we, we wouldn't want that. So uh, I, I'm just super glad you, you know, you decided to use the springs. Hearing uh, all this chatter on the street, I open my screen door and look out into the bright afternoon at these goofballs with their contraptions and <coughs> muttering. And I, I, is that, have you got a new, uh, are you trying a new illusion out in the neighborhood survey? Uh, yeah, it's the uh, the disappearing raccoon thief trick. Uh, oh, huh. yeah, we, we figured we'd uh, we, you know we'd show our uh, our appreciation for Mr. Corbett coming over, uh, you know, by taking care of that problem. You know, uh, you know, you could tell he's uh, he's carrying a heavy load, but uh, the only thing he verbalized to us was the uh, the the these these damn bandits there, the raccoons stealing all of his vegetables. So we figured we'd. Well, it was the corn he complained about, but you think that. Um... You think a raccoon is going to go anywhere near your funny looking boxes full of they love shiny stuff is that a thing about raccoons i didn't know i thought that are you sure it's not a crow trap uh i don't know that yeah, I would crows know that. are they do like yeah shiny stuff. good point crows are more tired not a target you didn't mention crows being a problem this, yeah but yeah, that looks like something a magpie might find attractive. It's, uh, and you are you gonna just drop it in his garden? Well, we don't want to. We don't want him to get hurt. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, we were thinking maybe along uh, uh, along the thicket there. You know, where the where the cornfield meets the uh, meets the the wood line. Uh, Horatio, are you seeing this? I, I'm you afraid. Where they, rec where they come out? I'm afraid our neighbors have gone mad. How does it work? Yeah. Show me how it works. Okay, there so, are uh, still animals. You, if we... Is it, are you going to bait it? Are you going to uh, steal some of Bernard's, Bernard's corn and put it inside? So if... uh, a raccoon, when it, uh, they, you know, they use their hands. They're very dexterous animals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, 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 the traps, they, the thing about a raccoon is once it makes a fist, uh, you know, it, 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 it'll reach in for the, uh, you know, for, for the, uh, the, the, we put the coins or just something shiny in there. When it reaches in, uh, you know, the, that's when the, 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 the spring is released and it starts to close around it. They start to pull and they're, uh, they just, they're, they're unable to uh, let go. Uh, they just, they don't think of it. They just, they've, they've got a, a hold of whatever they're trying to grab. And by the time they realize, oh, if I let go, I can get my hand back out. Uh, the, the trap is uh, shut behind them. Wow, that is an astonishing series of notions. Uh, yeah, it's an old Appalachian, uh, Appalachian mountain man trick. Uh, but my third uh, stagehand, Bosco, he was, uh, yeah, yeah, he was from Pennsylvania, so. In I response. Do simpler, I do have simpler, very simpler. Uh, I take a bit of the food I have in my storage and uh, I put it, inside, put it inside the box a little bit so that they, they are um, leaning towards it. There is a pressure pressure plate kind of mechanism be, beneath it. The raccoon gets on top of it. The mechanism activi it's activates itself. The trap, the trap just closes on himself. In response, in response to Peter's um, shout over to me, I close my hefty book of Homer and and walk over and join them. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, just I'm, I'm taking off my slippers and putting on something to walk across as well. Uh, so, so you're all standing in the middle of the street talking. <laughs> <laughs> Your street is never busy. Luckily, so. yeah, it's very. The only person who's going to be driving is. Uh, Mr. Corbett, if he comes back early. Uh, so I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm, we're planning to gamble on the weekend, but I'm already prepared uh, to make a wager that neither of these cockamamie raccoon traps work at all. And I will pay you 20 American dollars if they do, but I get to write the patent and uh, I'll take a, a very marginal 5% share Oh, I think I'll, I'll just make it for you. If I win, it's a uh, you get a five percent share. Well, not being I mean, a gambling man myself, I'll pass on that, Peter. But um, 
if you have a better idea of or a better understanding of raccoons, I'm open to other situations, other mechanism mechanism. You know, to be tomorrow I'll we'll find a solution to the Come problem. On. Don't 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 step on this action here. I'm about to make forty dollars off this guy. Don't don't you know don't, don't help him out. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm entirely comfortable wagering forty dollars that you will not catch a raccoon in that remarkable contraption of yours. Um, you might be part of the, your next illusion, but uh, an animal trap it certainly is not. Yeah, um, so you you think that the you think that the illusion is the uh, how to make a, a a raccoon disappear. It's actually uh, how to make your spending money disappear from your wallet and then transmogrify itself into mine. Could 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 could. Could it be possible to make some sort of a uh, scarecrow, some sort of device to? I think the problem with all of these theories is that raccoons are actually quite clever little buggers, and um, they're going to see through your funny box and your funny. I mean, the pressure plate. It's going to leap into the air before it falls into a box, and it's going to climb a scarecrow and whistle for its pals, and then they'll eat the stuffing. That's what I think. Let's go and set these uh, nonsense traps up. And uh, we have to leave. At least I'm trying. Oh, I appreciate that you're trying. I, you know, I, I have access to the patents in the US Patent Office, and perhaps there is an actual raccoon trap. And I'll research it tomorrow when I'm going to work. Uh, and we'll see how something that works is made rather than something that a couple of uh, local lunatics invented on a Saturday morning while hungover. I mean, we 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 could um, contact uh, a pest pest man. Well, uh, you know, I mean, as we know, Bernard has opinions about how things are done. He's got his little mm. frog houses and so on. But mm. uh, I might take your point, Peter. Mm. Yeah, let's let's set these up. Uh, I guess. Well, I mean, you're the inventors. You should set them up where you like. And we'll take uh, and I'll, we'll leave a note for Bernard on his front door so he doesn't wander out in the evening with a pipe and find himself permanently encased in one of your ingenious contraptions. All right. So to give you a little bit of an idea of the layout, uh, it looks uh, Mr. Corbett's yard is pretty much laid out like this. Ah. Uh. And I realize on my thing here, I put garage. He doesn't really have a garage. None of you really do. You have a little carport. Your car can park under there, but it's really just a roof over the area. Um, the large vegetable garden in the back, the greenhouse, and there's there's a, 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 a gardening shed, you know, where all of his equipment is. Um, I didn't really show the hedge on there, but everything that he has is immaculate. Um, the grass is perfectly even. The hedges are perfectly even across the top. Uh, the vegetable garden is planted with everything, perfect spaces in between everything. It's all lush, all the plants are the same size. Um, it's quite lovely. Uh, and as you wander a bit around, you do notice that around the perimeter of his vegetable garden, um, Every once in a while, you'll see a piece of pottery, believed to be brown or white or, or a, uh, like a coffee cup that he broke, um, buried in the ground. Um, where's my coffee cup? It's buried like this, so that the ground is about like that. Ah. And um, you, you notice almost immediately as you approach that there'll be a little toad sitting in the mouth of that that cup that'll immediately back jump back into the into the coffee cup as you approach but you you catch glimpses of them there must be 20 of them or so all the way around I find that quite disconcerting yeah make, try not to make sure you don't step on them uh, reminds me of the uh oh the uh, when the, the defense of jerusalem they uh they, i think it was the greeks i think they uh, they would plant terracotta pots in the field and uh, when the horses, when the Huns came or whoever it was to uh, to try to invade, they'd break their legs and they'd step on the, you know, step on these clay pots. So 
you know, watch out. Uh, we, we don't want to get trapped by one of Corbett's traps trying to help him out with one of ours. I'd probably <laughs> make a point of correcting you historically right. on, on that if if you're not Yeah, and it, this is purely totally accurate. He has no clue what he's talking about. He's just trying to, like, tell a half-remembered story to seem... He's always trying to, like, over-inflate his, uh, uh, his intelligence, but it, it never quite comes off because the details are messed up, you know? Oh, I'd, I'd most definitely um, correct you on your historical inaccuracies. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, you, you, can, you can see that there's not really any protection for the garden. Um, uh, probably deer and, uh, and raccoons and possums can literally just walk into his yard um, from the back. Maybe rabbits, too. They probably have rabbits. Um, Impressive that he has any lettuces at all. Yeah, but despite that, his, his garden is, is in very good condition. Uh, his cabbages don't have little caterpillars or anything. Everything looks very beautiful as it's growing, like a picture. Really, really need to ask this man his, his formula for his, um, well, the secret to growing these plants. It's amazing. And he, also fruit you, trees, fruit trees all over around him. Do you, do you guys see any tracks, raccoon tracks? Uh, in the grass, it would be hard, right? Yeah, you wouldn't see them in the grass. Mm, you know, and, the, and the tree line, I mean, it's clever the way he has his fruit trees up against the wild trees so that they um, are productive, but, but uh, don't stand out like uh, a beacon for vermin or whatever of whatever kind. Where are you going to put your, um, your gizmos and your d doodads? Oh, I was, just going to I was for, thinking uh, about. The, yeah, you first got. I was thinking about putting it somewhere where he could see it. Well, uh, also with having a little note on it, so that he isn't that surprised. And also saying that it's on me. On us. Well, we should we'd... leave a note on his door, certainly. Not wait for him to find it in the backyard and feel yeah. trespassed upon. Are there any bird feeders in the garden? There, there are not. You, you wouldn't guess that he was a nature lover. I mean, this is this is gardening in the very classic sense. All right, nature controlling. Uh, so while um, amateur inventors are setting up their uh, comical boxes full of springs, I'm going to uh, peer into the greenhouse. Okay. See what other varieties of orchid he has in there. Uh, when you approach the greenhouse, as I said, it's all whitewashed, so you can't actually see inside. You can see that there are plants in there. You mm -hmm. can see the shadows of them, um, but there's no place where you can see through, unless you were to scratch the whitewash away from the glass. Uh, so it goes. It covers. It goes right up to the uh, wooden slats between the panes. It's not correct. Right. Okay. Um, is there a glass roof of the greenhouse? Yes. Is is that whitewashed as it's, well? It's all whitewashed, yeah. It's a common practice. You guys probably, you oh, guys might even have little greenhouses of your own if you have your own little gardens. Um, you start plants in there when the winter is there so that you can plant them in the spring. Right. And in the summer, you want a degree of opacity so they don't turn into hot boxes that make right. your plants into Just oblivion. Just okay. um, uh, You can all do... Listen, rolls. Rolls, you say? First one of the game, isn't it? Yep, it is. And uh, listen, listen, listen. 17, <sighs> it's a hard success. Uh, 17 on 17. Oh, two. Oh, oh nice. Fail. fail. Um, you definitely, uh, those of you who passed, uh, you definitely notice that there is the sound of, of what sounds like some sort of an air compressor inside, probably keeping it from getting too hot, like an air conditioner. Oh my. Because right That's now fancy. it's it's June. It's probably it's probably 80 degrees outside. Like 24 Celsius. Yeah, I'm afraid I don't know my Celsius. Hot. Hot. Yeah. <laughs> hot, hot, but not it's unbearable. Hot. Right, and it's not too humid. Uh, a proper summer day. 
Oh, by the sounds of that, I don't think we should mess with the greenhouse. Um, I, I think I'll go and put up the note while you guys put up your, your traps. Also, the greenhouse is padlocked, so... Well, we ain't gonna go in there then yet. Right. <laughs> hmm. Uh, the shed has any, I don't know if you're going to look, but the shed would have any tools that you would need for gardening if you guys need to do something to set your trap. or The, sh the shed isn't padlocked. Uh, the shed is not padlocked. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, what the, with the, based on my abilities uh you know with uh with locks and all that is this a high quality padlock i mean it's it's a fairly high it's a high quality something that he would have gotten okay. from the hardware yeah. store okay. within the last few couple of years mm. yeah he's probably just some of the uh, some of the finer pieces from his import business he keeps i'm sure he has just uh maybe uh maybe some bird feeders or a water fountain from uh uh, you know, from, from Greece or something. I'm sure he just has, uh, so, you know, something that uh, he doesn't want to keep at the shop, perhaps, you know, for uh, for high value clients. You know, I I, I say I say we uh, just when uh, when we catch these raccoons, you know, we can uh, we can ask us to see what the what kind of fancy trinkets from the Far East he has waiting for us in there to, to admire. Um, but uh, I'm going to go set that up. So I'm going to go a lot past the fruit trees along the actual tree line right. where the uh, where the the grass stops and okay. just uh, where, uh, uh, where the uh, raccoons uh, would come first yeah right yeah yeah just yeah. out of yeah. natural yeah. curiosity um the whitewash is it on the inside or the outside it's on the outside um you can see the grass around the edges of the greenhouse have little splashes of, of white it's basically there, lime and water that you. Are there any um, blank patches that allow visual access to the inside of the greenhouse? There, there aren't. It's pretty even all the way around. However, whitewash is just a coating on the glass. You could scratch just, it off with your yeah, thumbnail out, if you wanted. Yeah, out of natural curiosity, I just make a little thumbnail size hole in the whitewash okay. and, and have a peek, peek through. All right, do a do a spot hidden for me. Oh, uh, oh. that's hard. Okay, twenty three. But actually, answer a question for me. Are you going to do this right about eye level? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you look through the greenhouse, and of course, you're looking into an area that's beautifully brightly lit. Um, it's lit because the whitewash actually distributes the light evenly all inside. So it's very bright, uh, but it's not direct sunlight blazing down. Uh, it's a, a well-organized jungle. Um, there's all sorts of things growing in there. And you can see directly under your, your vision right here, there are benches. So the, the way you think of this laid out is... There are, there are slatted benches along the sides. And then there is another bench in the center. So it's wide enough that you've got a bench, an aisle, a big bench, an aisle, and then the bench right in front of you. And directly in front of you, there are trays of young plants that are all growing in rows that he would probably later transplant out into larger things. You've seen this all kind of before because you've seen how vegetables grow. Um, but a lot of them, uh, it's almost like he's got that towards the front of the greenhouse and then towards the back. There are all sorts of exotic things growing. There are uh, some vines that go up to the, uh, up into the rafters of the greenhouse. There are large, oddly shaped, um, uh, gourds or pitchers or something that are hanging down. There are orchids growing everywhere. There's a big, uh, like a beer barrel uh, or half a half a whiskey barrel uh, with some sort of uh, 
beautiful exotic blue flower thing growing in it. Um, and you've got a hard. Uh, so as you're looking, you also notice that uh, at the far end of the greenhouse, um, kind of where this plant is, this big uh, blue flowered plant, it looks like there's a statue and it's sitting on a pedestal, uh, a plinth. Um, it's about so big, but you can't really tell what it is. And it is gold, or at least it's painted gold or gold leafed. Um, Golden color. Something, something that looks vaguely oriental or Indian or and that's what you can see through the I, I don't recognize the uh the, it's not a you can't see it well enough to okay you're kind of straining to see anything at all at that end but other than that it looks like a regular greenhouse you don't recognize hmm. all the plants but lots of flowers lots of uh things very, it's like, it's like a trial. I feel like you're looking to a beautiful tropical jungle. And now you've got a big spot. Where... <laughs> well, thumbnail size, but yeah. Um... Jakobus, what are you going to put in the note that won't, won't make Eugène and Survey seem like complete maniacs? <laughs> well, I was thinking. Maybe something um, taking care of your of your raccoon problem. Um, He's a bit scientific it. about so many things. Maybe we should propose that it's an experiment. Uh, he might find that. I mean, he's. It's not as though Bernard is famous for his sense of humor, but you know, maybe we can suggest by tone. You know, let's. Why don't you tell him that um, there's a wager on whoever can solve uh, Mr. Corbett's raccoon problem will win a prize? That sounds fair. Uh, Maybe we can just... tell him the uh, the odds. Mm -hmm. we, we we fancy win this. Yeah, and he'll be back. You know, before. Uh, dusk begins. So if he has, they tell him to to call, uh, tell him to call survey for an explanation. That'll serve okay. him right. Yeah. And I'll right. keep let an me, eye for his return. Let me pop around back to my place, and I'll I'll get up a, a notepad and pencil. All right. So you leave your note, and then I imagine you all go back to where you are. Somewhere around three o'clock in the afternoon, uh, Mr. Corbett's car pulls into his uh, houseport and he, uh, he gets out and uh, goes up to his uh, porch and you see him uh, fiddle with the key on the front door and uh, he seems to have a little difficulty getting in. Now, Peter, you probably know from the occasions when he goes on vacation and you watch his house, that his door kind of sticks. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got that problem. So he fiddles with that for a second, then it opens and he uh, goes inside. Where'd you leave the note? On the front door? Yeah. All right. So you see him look at the note and grab the note and um, step inside to, to read it and close the door. And uh, you, if, if Peter, you happen to be watching um, I am. After, after a bit, uh, maybe 10 minutes or so, you see him uh, go out. You can't see him go out his back door, uh, but you notice him suddenly appear over by his garden and he uh, he walks out past the fruit trees and you see him stand akimbo for a few minutes and walk back and forth and look at uh, however, how, how many did you put out there? Two? How many, how many traps, two traps? Yeah, I think it's I prototypes, think right? Is. Okay. He, uh, he looks at them and he gets hunkers down and he kind of is fiddling, trying to see, you know, how they're going to work and uh, crosses his arms and uh, then walks away from them. Uh, he goes over and as he's 
walking back, uh, you suddenly see him stop and he turns and looks over at his greenhouse. And then you all you can see from where you are is he walks behind his house towards the greenhouse because you can't actually see the greenhouse from your house. Um, and I didn't probably see Horatio get up to his hijinks. Right. So, um, but hijinks. that's all that you see of him. So at some point he probably goes in his house, which you can't see him do either. Um, and I go and tell Marta, like, I think we'll, he'll probably call Survey and then Survey will call me. Or maybe he'll call Eugene first and then, well, it's going to be funny. We should, uh, would you put up the kettle on? I want, I want to have uh, some tea and await the neighborhood hilarity. Well, maybe 20 minutes go by and Survey, you do suddenly the phone, your phone rings. So I've been waiting with bated breath because uh, nothing exciting ever happens here. Um, this, is, this is great. There's a, there's a mystery afoot. Uh, I, I'm practically uh, have my hand on the receiver in anticipation already. Uh, hello. Ah, Survey, it's, uh, it's Bernard. Ah, I see. Yeah. Did you, uh, you, you heard about the wager? I, uh, I hear. I, well, I, I, I saw your uh, very uh, imaginative contraptions. Um, uh, uh, just, just, uh, uh, you know, out of curiosity, which one, which one do you, uh, which, which one would you say that, uh, who made, who, which made which? Uh, oh, you did make them both. The, the one over by the apple tree, um, it has me only a little bit concerned because I was thinking, um, uh, isn't it possible that the um, the raccoon could get, uh, you know, it's 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 little hand trapped, and so uh, the 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 beauty of it is that the uh, so the when it as it closes its its fist, it, it can reach its hand in there. When it makes a fist, it's too big uh, to to get back out through the hole. And as it pulls back, that releases the spring that shuts the box behind it. It's almost like a lobster trap. If you've ever been trawling up in Maine, uh, they, oh, they, I, they, I, I, they I can crawl see in there. And so at, by the time they realize that, uh, oh, all I need to do is let go of my hand, the door is shut behind them. It's just it's a way to ensure that the uh, the animals the whole way into the trap before the mechanism is sprung. I, I uh, see. You know, well, yeah, I, I'm just hoping that it doesn't like get its arm caught in there and uh because it'll it'll probably injure itself, and I don't. But but, but we'll see. We'll see. It's a very interesting design. You should get uh, you should get Peter to uh, patent it if uh, if it uh, works. Yeah, uh, he, uh, yeah. You, you should uh, you should be a betting man too. That's exactly the wager that we made. I also um, I also kind of noticed that was was any were any of you around my greenhouse oh yeah we uh well we uh i think i heard some of the uh some of the other boys talking about uh as i was heading back um you know they noticed that the uh just the, the immaculately kept uh you, you know just you have an amazing garden over there we just were wondering what kind of riches uh you know riches the uh the greenhouse could hold uh but uh you know we noticed that it was locked so uh, I, I figured that, uh, you know, perhaps if we solve this raccoon problem, that then maybe we'll get a peek at whatever uh, is inside. Well, and, and I kind of lower my voice a little bit. I'm guessing you have some, uh, you know, so, some of the some of the good stock uh, from the import business back there. You know, so I totally understand not wanting to keep it in the shop. Uh, my, I imagine you don't pay your stock hands enough to uh, to keep out. It's, it's nothing like that. It's um, there's a lot of plants that need a very specific temperature and humidity, and I've got the thing uh, controlled and, and balanced. So I don't, I, I myself don't even go in there except you know when I need something or or, or so forth. Um, I mean, I what I saw was a little bit of the whitewashing. It's it's not a big deal. I mean, if you guys want to peek, you know, just ask. I'll I'll show you around the greenhouse. Uh, it's just plants. It's, you know, it's nothing, nothing really important, um, okay. except they're important to me. And I, I, like I say, I'm trying to grow them. Some of them are very unusual and exotic from uh, parts of the world, uh, are very difficult to keep alive. Um, but uh, 
you know, I, I, I don't really even mind point. that you came on my property, but, you know, because, you know, I'm not, I don't have any regrets or, or I mean, uh, reservations about any of you. Uh, but if you guys are curious about anything, just, you know, just ask and we can, mm -hmm. I can show you around. Um, of course, next week, uh, I, you know, I've got um, work during the week. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm less looking forward to, I was hoping that you had some, uh, you know, something exciting back there but uh yeah just plants i'm i'm not uh not too big into nature i uh yeah well, I'll, so, I'll show you sometime you know, if, you guys are you know, if we're if we're if we're coming by of course i'm not going to turn down the opportunity to you know witness your horticultural excellence there so. probably your wives would be more interested in the flowers and things of course of course all right um yeah i'll keep you apprised on the raccoon situation indeed i've got 40 dollars on the line huh all right. Have a good evening. You too. All right. And so what do you do? <laughs> do you want to call the others or? I'm going to, um, I'm guessing at this point, uh, looking out the window and seeing who's on the front porch, you know, who's got the blinds uh, open. And, uh, you know, I, I'm waiting to see if, uh, I'm waiting to see if Peter's on the porch, if he has to go inside because he's getting a phone call next. And if not, then uh, uh, you know I'll uh, I'll give him a call. Peter has the advantage of he can see everything at Mr. Corbett's from the front window because it looks right out there. <laughs> oh, I, so I probably wouldn't be able to see his front porch anyway, so I probably would give Peter a call. Um, you know, because I okay. wouldn't have even seen uh, you know him him get there and you know the whole thing. Um, so uh, right. yeah, I guess I would call Peter and uh, yeah, do that whole deal. And it's been 18 minutes, Marta. Mark it down. I was almost precise. Hello. Hello. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so uh, did he? Uh, w w did he? Did he? He, he saw the traps. So, uh, which which one did he go to first? Uh, the uh, the one. I mean, I he because he was walking from his back porch. It took about, about about eight minutes from when he entered and saw the note to go to the backyard, and he went to the one uh, farthest to the east first. I, I didn't hide it as well as uh, I, I didn't I didn't hide it as well. I guess um, uh, the raccoons are definitely gonna aren't gonna be fooled by it then. Well, well you know he he look impressed. He he gave he gave it he gave them both uh, concerted attention. So he, I, I think that Bernard thinks you're a little less crazy than I do. Um, yeah, well, I just spoke with him. Um, he, uh, he, he asked, uh, to, "Hey, did you guys mess with the? Did you guys mess with the greenhouse?" Um, he, he offered to show you guys uh, to show us. Uh, I guess he's just got plants in there or something. But uh, I don't know. It sounded like he could tell we were around by there. So uh, I, I think he was being polite. It didn't seem like he was too upset about it. But uh, yeah, I guess they're just the plants. Um, the, what do you mean the, mess the with? Delicate. What, you, what was that? What do you mean mess with? I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it was footprints. Uh, he just, uh, he, he asked if we were around the the, the greenhouse. Hmm. I just told him that because of the lock, we uh, I figured that he had some import export uh, goods in there, something that he didn't want to keep at the shop. But uh, yeah, just it's, uh, I, I don't know uh, how he would have known we were in there. So I was just wondering if, you know, did you guys jimmy the lock or did you, did you peek in or what yeah i don't think I anybody know. would have broke it into the greenhouse um, right yeah i thought it was odd you know he's so precise about everything who knows yeah. uh all right well grass bent too far here yeah. yeah really um when do raccoons hmm yeah i mean they're 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 night uh nocturnal animals i don't know when they do most of their family rearing and all that i wonder I'm, I'm impatient for the resolution in fact we should figure out the terms of that how long do these traps have to not work before uh you abandon them well uh i would say that you know given the fact that both of them have some kind of uh, mechanism you know that's uh it's that's being held open by tension that uh they, they're going to spring themselves eventually i'm sure you know wind or uh you know anything like that so i suppose once the door shuts on the trap 
uh, whether if there's not something in it, then uh, the, then the bet is lost. What do you say? Or Corbett becomes too impatient and has you take them away. I bet they're going to be full of earwigs within a week. Mm. Um, yeah. All right. Well, uh, you've uh, satisfied a wager between Marta and me. Uh, I get to have an extra brandy after supper. Uh, uh, best of luck. And may the best yeah. man win. Indeed, he shall. All right. And let's say that over the course of the next couple of days, all of that information gets shared with everybody. <laughs> thing. Um, you don't hear uh, as the week progresses anything much from Mr. Corbett. I mean, he goes about his thing, his, his work, um, comes back in the evenings, does, follows his routine precisely. Um, Peter, you might occasionally have noticed him go and check those traps just to make sure, but uh, apparently nothing so far. Yes, Horatio. Um, if, if I find out that he was a bit concerned about someone tampering with his greenhouse, uh -huh. then I will make a point of visiting Mr. Corbett and um, to apologize if I overstepped um, and you know, be honest with him. It was pure, you know, purely curiosity, natural, natural curiosity. I, I didn't. You know, well, I, at the I, time I, that I, you, I didn't mean. At the time that you speak to him, he really doesn't have the free time to show you around the greenhouse. But he doesn't really mind. He knows that you were curious, and you know, if humans weren't curious, then we would never have gotten this far. Um, he seems very understanding. And, if you guys would like to see something, you know, sometime he can set that up. You guys can come and visit and he'll show you around. But it's really nothing. He says it's really, it's just he's most concerned with the, the climate inside there. Um, all right. I'm, I wanna, I'm I wanna, very, very apologetic towards it, like, towards my actions. I, I want to move ahead now because we're getting close to the end. Um, at least the end of tonight. Uh, were you going to invite him to poker? You were. Absolutely, yeah. Um, he declines. Uh, and you're not really surprised. He, yeah. he declines just about everything. But he's very gracious and he thanks you and all of that. Um, so a week goes by. Saturday comes and goes. That's the last day of the month. And now it's Sunday, uh, the 1st. Uh, and you guys have been playing poker. Uh, you you got together maybe a little bit earlier, uh, maybe let's say around 11 a.m. Uh, you had a nice lunch. Um, the ladies got started on their bridge games, uh, and you guys are teaching Horatio how to play poker, and he's picking up on it. You know, it's an easy enough game. And you start with Penny Ante, and then you... Uh, you start, you know, raising the stakes a little bit. So, it's... I think that I'm, uh, I think that I'm going to um, try to use a little bit of, uh, you know, stage sleight of hand. I, I want to, I want to help uh, feed him some good cards from the bottom of the deck. You know, uh -huh. we're all friends. It's his first time playing. I want him to have a good time. So, if I can send him a couple aces, uh, I'm going to do that. All right. Um, all right. So it's around three in the afternoon. I would like you all to do spot hiddens. Oh, that's an extreme 2%. Critical failure. Oh, oh eight. So Horatio and Jacobus both got extremes. Yes. I've had two rolls both in the 80s. <clears throat> OK. And so the rest of you failed. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to describe what happens like this. Horatio and Jacobus are sitting on one side of the table. And you other three are kind of wrapped around the other side of the table. It's, uh, it's a round table that you got from quite a ways. But 
from Jacobus's and Horatio's point of view, they can see out the uh, your bay your bay window in the front uh, towards Mr. Corbett's. So while you are playing your cards, uh, uh, you are only half noticing what's going on outside. But you see Mr. Corbett drive up right about three o'clock, which is about his usual time for finishing his drive. He uh, gets out of his car and he goes to his trunk and he pulls out a couple of packages. Um, one of the packages is about this long and it's it's an oblong sort of package. And the other package is kind of round and, and uh, oddly shaped like a, a ball about a, the size of a, a large melon or so, but it's all, they're all wrapped up in brown paper. He gets out, he closes his trunk, he walks up to his front door and he begins to fiddle with the lock, uh, trying to hold these things in his hand. And as he does this, he accidentally drops the packages and they, they hit the, uh, the, the porch and the round one sort of rolls a little bit. And the, uh, the oblong one ro rolls right to the edge of the step and unwraps just a little bit. And because you guys got extremes, you guys are, are, are thinking as you're looking, it's like, oh, you know, he, he dropped his packages. And the one that unwrapped, you sort of go, well, what, what is that? Um, it's kind of cylindrical and um, about that long. Uh, and it kind of flopped when it hit the ground. And you're thinking, is it a, a fish? Is he having fish for dinner? You know, is it is it like a salmon or a fish? It's it's kind of gray, but not dark gray, kind of light gray. And Mr. Corbett unlocks the door and opens it up and he turns back around and he grabs up the, the, the ball package under his arm and he reaches down and grabs the the thing lying there. And as he picks it up, it sort of flops out of the package as, as he's sort of trying to wrap it back up. And what you see is not a fish. It looks like a hand. On the end oh of my arm. God, what is that? And both of you suddenly start, and he's wrapped it up and gone in the house. And that's where we're going to end it for tonight. <laughs> um, when we get back, you guys can do sanity rolls. You can do sanity rolls now uh, yeah. just to see if you leap up out of your chair. Uh, I leap up. <laughs> okay. oh, I made it by 4%. Okay. Well, I think if you made it, you don't scream. You might gasp a little. Uh, but Jacobus, you, you visibly stand up and look. Now, you're not 100% sure of what you saw. It was just a moment. And you guys have been drinking a little. I, I'm teetotal. So but I'll... that sure didn't look like a fish. So that is where we will end it for this evening. Our players included Yusuf Gita, uh, David Gassaway, Will Logsdon, uh, Chris Von Weich, and Simon Benfey as, uh, and with myself as the Keeper of the Secrets. We had some interesting names tonight. <laughs> we have a Discord server where you can chat with our other members. You can set up private games and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. There's a link below. We provide audio only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. The costs involved with the show are provided almost entirely by our patrons. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar or two a month helps us a lot. You can find a link in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of HP Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.